Welcome to Home Assistant June Release Overview. The developers, contributors behind Home Assistant have been hard at work, and this month's release brings a whole bunch of polish, improvements and exciting new features. So stick around and we will start in a couple of seconds. Let's start with the pickers. These are the dropdowns you use all over the Home Assistant interface, whether you are choosing entities, devices, areas or users. Last month's release introduced redesigned entity picker, and this time the same polished experience has been extended to nearly all pickers across the Home Assistant system. That means faster search, better usability and consistency wherever you are selecting some. The device picker also got a fresh coat of paint, with manufacturer logos and a sleek new look to match the entity picker. It's a small change that makes everyday use just a bit more delightful. Bluetooth users also got a treat this month. The Bluetooth integration now shows graph that visualize how Bluetooth devices are connected to Home Assistant, either directly or through Bluetooth proxies. You can even see nearby Bluetooth devices that aren't paired yet or known to Home Assistant. Yes, it's like an X-ray vision for your smart home wireless environment. And speaking of graphs, the ZigBee integration got the same love too. Its network visualization now matches the style of the new Bluetooth graphs, bringing things into a more cohesive look and feel. You know, one of the things I really love about Home Assistant is how it gives you control and insight into your smart home. And if you are like me, that mindset doesn't stop at gadgets and dashboards. You want to understand how things work. That's where Brilliant comes in. It's this incredible app that helps you grasp complex ideas, things like logic and AI, through interactive problem solving. Not lectures, not passively watching videos. You learn by doing. Whether you are debugging a flaky automation, or trying to optimize your energy tracking setup. Understanding how systems behave and how to think logically makes a huge difference. And that's exactly what Brilliant trains you to do, with hands-on courses on logic, scientific thinking, even Python programming and AI fundamentals. It's honestly like upgrading your brain the same way Home Assistant upgrades your smart home. If you are curious, you can try Brilliant totally free for 30 days at brilliant.org slash beardedthinker or just scan the QR code on screen. And if you decide to stick with it, you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So go ahead, check it out. Experimental Areas Dashboard, first introduced in the April list of Home Assistant, has received a handful of thoughtful updates based on community feedback. There is now a new action section that includes scripts, automations and scenes. Entities like number helpers, button helpers, counters and timers have found home in the new other section. And to avoid confusion, what was previously called entertainment is now labeled media players. Small change, but smart change to make things easier and clearer to use. Let's talk about some bigger news, deprecations. This release marks the official deprecation of the two older installation methods. These are the core and supervised. These have served a portion of Home Assistant community for years, but are no longer the focus of going forward. The supported installation types are now Home Assistant OS and also Home Assistant Container. If you are using one of the deprecated methods, Home Assistant will now notify you through repairs dashboard and help you guide to the migration. Also being phased out is support for 32-bit CPU architectures, including i386, ARM HF and ARM P7. These older architectures have become increasingly rare and are difficult to maintain. Official support continues through December 2025, but after that updates and assistance will end. As always, there is a fresh batch of integrations joining the Home Assistant ecosystem. This month welcomes Home Assistant devices for Echo, Fire TV and also Alexa-enabled gear. Imic, a self-hosted photo and video backup solution has joined the lineup and Paperless Engine X makes it easier to manage your digital documents from within Home Assistant. 
Pro Plus brings in the real-time Bluetooth meat thermometer readings because, yes, Home Assistant can help you cook. And Zimi Cloud Connect allows you to monitor and control your Zimi smart home devices. There is also a new virtual integration for Kaiser Ninehouse, provided by Motion Blights, to make it easier to find and connect relevant devices. Several existing integrations have seen improvements. For example, ESP Home now supports updating devices that are in deep sleep, and this is a huge for battery power setups. Teslemetry adds new sensors for valet mode, hazard lights and also account credit. The SmartThings integration has seen a surge in support for all kinds of appliances and climate devices. Miele now supports vacuum support, dryer sensors and much more. Shell integration has been enhanced with better handling of the multi-channel devices. Sonos now shows playlists under favorites, big win for usability, and maybe one of my favorites, SwitchBot now supports more vacuum and lock models, so you can add all of those devices that you previously couldn't add. The integration quality scale is something that developers take pride in, and this release celebrates a few major milestones. Mila has reached platinum level, SwitchBot hits gold, and Shelly has achieved silver. These quality levels reflect deep testing, documentation and long-term maintainability. It's not just about what works, it's about what works well and stays that way. Sidebar customization has been improved in a subtle but meaningful way. Now when you rearrange or hide sidebar items, these settings are stored in your user profile. That means your sidebar will stay the same across all devices, including phone, tablets and desktops. No more tweaking settings over and over again. One really nice usability improvement is the new support for media player groups directly from within the UI. Previously, if you wanted to join or unjoin a group of media players, you need a script or automation. Now you can just use the media player card in your dashboard. If your media player supports grouping, you'll see the option right there in the interface. But remember, this is limited to just a small fraction of the media players. Another small but useful addition is the entities that these can now be reset to their original values. If you renamed something and regret it, or just want to tidy up your naming, there is a reset button available in that entity or device settings page. You can reset individual IDs or reset all the IDs on the device at once. There are also dozens of other enhancements. For example, Home Assistant now warns you if a backup has failed to include all add-ons or folders. Auto-update add-ons now trigger proper backups. There is a new entity that logs automatic backup events. The template integration got major upgrades. The new YAML support for template logs, vacuums, fans and more. Trigger-based template covers are now also possible. You can use trigger value with time triggers. New filters like from hacks and improved base64 encode are also available. And the long requested feature, you can now query statistics directly from recorder using the new recorder get statistics service. Some new sensor units have been added as well. Things like reactive energy, watt hours per kilometer, gas volume in liters and more. Thoughtful touches everywhere. And yes, there is a backward incompatible change. This one for the Met Office integration. As always, a massive thank you goes out to all the developers, contributors, testers and translators that make each Home Assistant release possible. If you'd like to get involved or just hang out with fellow users, check out the community forums or join the very active Discord. And don't forget to sign up for the Building the Open Home newsletter for monthly updates. This wraps up everything in the June 2025 release. Like, subscribe and of course I must say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, liked or subscribed to my channel. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, happy automating, bye bye and have fun.